But before I get into that, since the topic talk about that, why to switch to Toyota Startup from a retrospective, I would like to know from the forum here what are the problems that you face with uh, retrospective. And because even if you think about going to the Carta, what is you all have been doing retrospectives, right? We are all legalists out here, right? Top three points uh, on why we feel that it, the retrospective doesn't work for us. Anyone, I will just note it and, and see that we are able to address and can Carta address those problems. Okay. Primarily building to address it. So, uh, when I start with, uh, it says Toyota Kata because this was first implemented by Toyota uh, along with the ring principles in their packages so that you can do overall improvement in the process. And they sort of started with uh, a concept called There's a character called Mr. Hans, and uh, when he teaches uh, uh, the kid on karate, he uses a couple of tactics like rub right hand, rub left hand. So those are things Kata says that you have to practice till you get to the profession. So it comes from uh, taekwondo and, and karate uh, from from that process, and then said you have to practice till the time you reach a mastery, and then take it to the next level. Doing small things on daily basis to improve the process towards target condition. So we'll talk about what target condition is. Working towards the target condition by overcoming next obstacle, surprises, uncertainties. And Kata is a continuous journey that never ends. So you can't say, uh, unlike retrospective, that whatever the retrospective point we have found, we have sort of ended it. You will see it never ending and it, it evolves across the time. It closely ties up with we all in this house of lean and very fantastic thing that Toyota came up with and, and then we all follow even in the software paradigm now. So this all we know, right? You have continuous improvement at risk of people, the two pillars, and, and the saving of best qualities, lowest cost, shortest lead time, best safety, highest moral. And then we follow our PDCA cycle, plan to check and act, right? That, that's the lead fundamental that we do. But what Tata says, or Tata has implemented, which, and they are doing it, which we don't follow in software industry as of now, or some of us follow deliberately, is scientific way of thinking. Now the question comes is, what is scientific way of thinking? And so, so I am collecting of my brother, see the gentleman who owns all this content, so I have to put it over there. So let's try this out, right? very small exercise, let us shake hands with each other using the hand that you normally use across the table. Right? <laughs> now let's try to do the reverse, use the hand that you normally don't use. <laughs> right? How do you feel? No, the first time and the second time. First one in the conventional way, right? That's what we always do. We'll never use a second approach, ever. I mean, if I'm not telling you, if you go and meet somebody, you will never use a second approach, correct? That's where Kata begins, right? So it says you have to rewire your brain. Why? The scientific things develop your that thought process, right? Now let's see what we do. Scientific thing says, the scientific thing is, is a routine of intentional coordination between we think what happened in theory, right, and actually happens evident, and then adjust based on what we learn from different sources. If you the learning, it's it's two faced that what they say. They say that what expect to happen, so we all predict in retrospective this will happen. We have reduced down the velocity, probably the next print will the same velocity. But 
bang, what happened, you know? You're surprised. The next print you might see a bigger velocity. We never expected that, right? Then, if you fall back to the retrospective, you will feel that probably what we have analyzed or not retrospective is not right. Right? So, we are not prepared for what actually happened. Why? So, what we do is say, whatever is visible, we use all lean tools and techniques and apply to it and see what is visible and derive on that. What we don't do is this part. The systematic and scientific way of thinking and acting and build the manager, the scrum masters and on the product owner as a coach. So if we are improving in the next sprint, we don't go actually see the, normally we don't go and the cause, what is the difference of the kind of story qualities or the requirement qualities or the team quality that is attributed to that and then gain up from it. Normally we don't do it. We are very happy that next sprint, the, the, you know, the velocity went up and we stay with it. Do we do a genuine effort of putting them up together again as a team and make it a success story forever? Very few people do in the retrospective world today. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about in Indian context uh, with my experience across three four organizations. We are more overwhelmed about that we have hit the story spin and we force the team that let's do it again without retaining the same composition. So that's what we focus when we say we are doing the scientific thinking. But this is very clearly you know, visible that we can always see and we build our retrospective on. So, what uh, Lean says and then we derive from scientific thinking and I mean my author says uh, from uh, Carter part that there are four different ways of building up a new skills. So we said that's a little frequent practice every day. So that's where major difference is that we only don't wait for the retrospective at the end of the sprints. Right? We do the improvement every day. So whatever we decide on that particular day should continue for the day every day. We normally don't do it as a, as a practice unless we have a retrospective backlog and, and do forward it. But Tata says we have to do every day. Then we do a starter cutter structure routine for the business to practice the fundamentals. So we form a team and we we'll see how we uh, we form the team and move forward to it. Then we do a coaching and then we get into the mastery and, and that's how the cycle goes on. So we build up another coach and the coach train another trainer and we'll see the difference of role in a Carter practices. So, when we do uh, IK, which is called Improvement Kata, and there is two, two part of Kata, what is IK and CK. IK is Improvement Kata and CK is Coaching Kata. Improvement Kata is the improvement process, the four layer process that we do. And when the coach is enabled, it, we call it the Coaching Kata. Right? So what we do, what understand the direction of the challenge. So what we want to address, right, in terms of, which again comes in retrospective, right? We find out the retrospective pattern. We say continuous improvement, what do you want to improve? Motivation lacking. Do you want to improve on motivation? Let's tackle on to it. Uh, uncertainties are there. Do you want to control uncertainties? Let's target towards it, right? Grab the current situation. So what we don't do is that the target that we want to achieve, how far are we from that particular target, right? Then say, establish the next target condition, which might not be exactly what we want to achieve with the direction, right? They say that one, <coughs> so in Carta we run small iteration of uh, target condition and then move forward to it to achieve the direct challenge. And then we do experiments so with that, that act or the iteration that we do, we said they do an experiment toward the target condition. So you see what, while we run in agile, a sprint so that we have clear visibility, I think Murti said very well, so that we have a better understanding of the usability or the functionality. But when we are doing retrospective, we don't run any, any iteration. Right? There is no agility or no government over there where it is the most important important facet of doing doing an agile work because you want an overall improvement in, in the work that we do, overall improvement in terms of quality, overall improvement in terms of the team work. But we don't iterate over there. Right? Carter brings in that level of iteration. So again, it's the improvement Carter combines of the scientific steps. So what the steps that you are taking over there and it's, it's not great, we'll see that how we can capture and how it can pretty well go with your Scrum, Scrum Pan and Kanban as a board and techniques of deliberate practice for each step to develop the effective problem solving skills. So these are the four facets. Uh, I've, uh, it's detailed and it's again, it's, it's a patented site by Toyota Kata uh, consortium. So this is what you will see if you open up Toyota Kata site. That's the prescribed. So say that we have start here, the describe the overall challenge that we describe. So that will give you the direction and we use the problem mapping thing. As we do story mapping to so what we want to achieve and say so this is a bigger problem and let's map towards it with small iterations. We do a current condition, state our current state where we are, 
Next target condition, if you say four or five targets in between, first target is identified and you don't have to identify all the target condition in the same goal. You can keep on. Some part of time a team to reach the same distance might need five target condition, but if a team is maturity, they can reach their by two target conditions. So it's not defined. You say you as a team understand what is your target condition and track toward it. And the iteration, which you use a PDC cycle over there, you know, can't do check and act because that's how we experiment and move forward to it. And then we have five coaching questions. Again, we'll come to it because we will talk about those slides. Now, another interesting fact out there, right? This area is not a linear one, right? When we say that we have to track towards this with target condition, it's not a linear one, right? It is a sort of, you know, zigzag because the, con the experiment that we have to conduct is not always give you a linear result, right? We can always see that what we expected out of that experiment or the target condition is not being achieved. So we have to deviate a path and find out another way of addressing it, right? Which again, we normally don't do in retrospective. We, we go for a linear thing and say, oh, this is what we'll, anything. Like you said that the problem is because of environmental problem, right? We are not able to do the build on time or we are not able to achieve CICD or anything like that on, on a given time, it's an environment problem. Might be not. It might be a script problem. We never thought about it. So if you have a target for the next sprint that I this sprint I'm doing two builds per day, I will achieve a four builds per day, and you derive the fact that that is an environment problem, your entire premises of setting a target condition is wrong. You will never achieve it. So what we can do if we have entering check, you can say fine, we got we are not able to hit four, right? But we have identified the problem and you see the exercise exactly. And it's a script problem. So you know what? I'm changing my target from four to three now. I will do three instead of two. It's still an improvement. Rather than failing you completely. Right? So as I mentioned, so you have two parts of it, the improvement kata, a practical four-step model which we discussed. And the coaching kata is a pattern of teaching improvement kata by the team itself. So we can hire an external coach, right? And then can train into you and they can train a coach and a learner, and the learner can himself become a coach after a couple of practices and then you can take the team through. So the first step of doing it, aware of it as I said, you have to learn through it. So you hire a coach so that he make you learn that how to go for a kata, how you do a kata session, how you plan for it, set up your current condition, target condition and then interim goals and to track towards it. What are the scientific way of thinking that you do it? But you don't stop doing it. You, if you are able to do it, you become a skill development begins out there and then you go to the next level and able to teach, right? And, and then this iteration goes through. So to coach improvement kata, then this first needs to experience with applying the improvement kata. So I can't jump into a kata coaching or kata uh, session for a, for a team if I am not aware of it. So I have to be a part of the team where the kata is being implemented, learn from there and bring the practice. And there's a scale up model for this one. So the first part of it, first three is called the planning cycles. when. Uh, when the learner is doing, understand the direction, grab the current situation, accept this new step. And experiment the target condition is the execution cycle. So this planning cycle, the coach go through it, and then execution cycle, it works with the team. And then once you're master of it, this person can switch role and move forward. <coughs> so now to our topic, right? How does startup fits into the overall development for the process? I have taken Scrum and Kanban, but it can it is pretty well used in Lean as well. Right, uh, probably a bit of higher traffic, don't want to go there uh, in the interest of time. And again, I'm saying I've just squeezed the entire 120 slides into 40 slides of mine. So if you have any questions, we can discuss offline or probably end of the session. And anybody who is interested uh, to start with an implementation of some part of Kata, not in full pleasure in your retrospective process, I'm welcome. I can be reached out in LinkedIn and, and on the mail, and I can help you over there. So this is this is normal thing that we see, right? Daily management generate ideas. As we do in, if you go to a retrospective session, it will be all ideas, like blocks come in, right? So what is it? We are finally engaging team members in daily huddles. I'm stand up for happening, right? I'm very happy. As I like said, we have standards and deviations are obvious. So I am pretty much, you know, aligned with the quality. Team members are making great suggestions, motivated team. And I'm done, right? But unfortunately, these actions alone often lead to unsighted and action item list approach as, as we do in retrospective. Right? This statement itself doesn't mean that my team is a super motivated agile team, right? And can they can deliver or work as an agile efficient team altogether. What do you mean by unscientific action? Yeah. So what I'm saying, uh, if you go back to the previous slide, that we are seeing the surface part of it, 
right? We are making an assumption based on this that the team members are making great suggestions. If I am a person in that particular retrospective, I will say that team is still the self sufficient on its own. But is is that actually a fact? I don't know. Okay, because I am not using my scientific brain of it to analyze beyond that. Yes. No, not the good cause. That's an assumption that I'm making. The team is a super efficient and motivated team. But if that's an actual fact, I don't know. It's just on the assumption of the superficial layer. Because I have not used my scientific approach over there and derived based on facts and figures that whether that is true or not. So this normal retrospective, what we do, uh, smiley, yawning, and face. But if you see the normal, and that you can go and notice, and you know, I can can hear back from you. If you go and see your retrospective, the kind of any mechanism you follow, uh, sailboat mechanism or football mechanism, anything that you follow, and if you see your list, teams, or the groups, most of them you will find they are all diversion. You, you you go and see to it, and you have to do it. Because actually, I don't know how we are practicing it, but you have to roll it up to a team level. So you collect your points from all the team members, vote on it, take the top five. Some of part of the exercise we'll do over there uh, for this context, and then make it to the team. You see, all those three or four teams are, are are in a different directions. So it's very important to pick up a direction and see which theme we need to work upon for the next level of improvement. If you want to tackle and attack all three together, uh, we are bound to it. So. This is this is a difference between uh, the retrospective and thought data, and, and it's, it's quite visible. And, and I think this is this is the fact. So if in a retrospective, we'll say we are sleeping back, right? We need to maintain the operators are responsible. We need more discipline, right? Whereas if uh, start doing that, I will say we aren't there yet. So I know my goal. I have not reached there yet. No. But that doesn't mean that I'm not improving, right? What is preventing us from reaching next target? So it's more scientific to understand that what is stopping us from reaching us, right? While we are saying the operators are responsible, there could be management responsible as well because probably we are not enabled to that right? A, 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 a sprint failure, normally we just roll it up to the team, right? But probably there's management issues as well. And what's the next step? So. What we need to try to do out here is we try to maintain standard by reaching abnormalities. Right? Activities should be undertaken incorporating a scientific thinking pattern. That we're saying, and the good idea is to think of any standard of goal and then pursue it scientifically with the routines of improvement part time. So let's. That's what I said. That figure out your own goal, not four builds, probably three builds. Even not three builds, we will say that we will iron out all the issues in build. Right? Then you can assure the next sprint or the next cycle that will take up, you can do four builds. Right? So those kind of uh, assessment that you have to do on yourself. Coming to software paradigm, so normal vision that we set up the target goal is zero defect in productions, 100% value added, high value first on demand. Right? Target condition examples that you might be having make all work visible to the stakeholders. Reduce the lead time by 50%. Right? Reduce the work in progress by 25%. Deploy the production in every two weeks. Implement specific by examples, something like that. And the question comes in: How often should we do it? Should we do it every monthly, or fortnightly, or weekly, as your sprint is, or we do it daily? So, if at least one experiment a week you should do. That's what Kata said. That one improvement initiative you should take up and see how we are progressing towards it. Always, at least one active experiment should be on in your, in your team, the team that you are conducting, and all the time. So, it should never stop. We should never feel that you know we are all good about it. There is some area or other in, in any facet, like in terms of. The process, so machines, or or the humans that need to address. Okay. So we have, as as we saw in the dialogue, or or the or the scaling up. So this is a scaling version for you. So this is a scaled up version of uh, Kata. So we can do a daily Kata, which is in the lowest level, at the extreme level. We can do an improvement Kata when we do VSM or value stream mapping out there uh, for for the bigger teams in the group of teams. We'll see that how how can we map. And then operation review kata, which for a bigger for probably a program level or operation level. So we can, and it can roll up. So when we see that swim length, and we'll see that soon, you can see that one target condition for one team can be current condition for the other team. Okay. So this is how an activity looks like. So this is a kata kata. So we'll have a coach and a learner as a coaching cycle. This is your kata board. So we have all sections. The learner learner storyboard. We'll have the focus process. We'll give a name to it. We we'll define the challenge, what we want to address. 
we have target condition defined in, in details. You will see this board in a uh, magnified version in some time. Then we have current conditions being analysis. So what are current condition we are analysis? We have five Kata questions will come to it, which the coach or, or the person who is running retrospectives or our Kata questions will ask. We'll have PDC cycle records that after every PDC cycle, what is our outcome? And we'll have obstacles path. This is the impediments that's stopping us from reaching our target condition. And we'll have run charts. Run charts can be anything. You can have your cumulative flow diagrams. You can have your burn down charts. Anything that is being produced. So you see, the data that we're having over here, you're not making any additional initiative than what you're doing in normal agile tracking tools. It can be anything, right? It can be version one. It can be Jira. Anything that you're using or Rally, right? It just Picking up those data, making a proper session and putting that in place. Again, she said that you know, if you have current condition and a challenge condition, your unclear trajectory can be like, drip, like dribbling through a football, right? It is never linear. It can be, it can't be. Right? So you have to figure out which track you want to follow. So your learner story, but as I said, you have a focus process. This is a standard code you can maintain it. You have a challenge out there. See, build the target condition, that's what I want to achieve. Current condition where you are after your assessment, every assessment your current condition will come in, whether it's weekly or daily that you have to decide. But whenever you assess yourself, your current condition will be seen. Your PDC cycle records that why this current has happened and what is my next step will come over there, and obstacle parking lot over here. And this area can be used for your charts and other artifacts to support. The five questions that we ask is that what is the target condition that we derived for? What is the actual condition now? And then what obstacles do you think are preventing you from reaching your condition? Which one are we addressing now? That has to be clarified. Yeah. Sure. So for this board, hmm. uh, there is do you have multiple boards for each different challenge? No. For per team there should be one. So at times you can have only one challenge that you are focusing on. So you can have target condition as two target conditions. But the focus process and the challenge, like yeah. The team should be safe. So that's what that what we suggest. So you say for a team of ten, you should have one challenge. One challenge. Yeah. At any given point of time. Can I give an example, please? Yeah, I will. So, so this is the questions, and then what is the next step? How quickly we can see that happen? The reverse of the part will have reflect on the last step taken. What did you what what did you plan for your last step? What did you expect? And what actually happened and what you learned. So this will divide derive your PDC cycle and then you come back to the second to third question again and carry forward from it. So it's an iterative cycle till the time you do it. So this is what we call Kata card. Both the cycles will be there. So you can give it when well, you ask this question, this can be filled up by your team member or the person who are contributing to it, and then you can derive from those. Again, so so we, we say the first one is hypothesis, then we build up a prediction, we do observation and coming for, and then we run the cycle. So Normally, uh, it says that when you start with 50% of correct effort fails because you are learning up. So gradually, you build up because you know now how to dribble through. So if you go back to that chart where we are crisscrossing onto it, that path needs to identify. But again, you get some learning out of it. So the same thing. So the example part of it, right? So let's say a uh, uh, Kanban cut a practice on a given session, right? So you are setting up your target condition and how do you do it, right? So first question that you can ask the team, what are you trying to achieve, right? So you say, user story X, Y, Z should be done by Wednesday or so on and so on forth, right? So call, I'm code ready for release on every Wednesday. So this is my, this is what I'm trying to target, right? So what is the current condition? Where are we now? So we might not get user story X done by Wednesday. That's the team member said. This is a normal retrospective format that we're asking the team, right? The, the reason that we derive the current, and the trunk is currently not stable, we can't release until it's stable. Right? I mean, so that, that's from the, the, the stream from which we are developing and developing, it's not stable, hence we can't release, and hence the story won't be ready for its thing. So what's now in our way? So the obstacles that would come in. Large bug fix made by automated test fail. So what is the reason that caused? So we have an automation suit which run on the on the uh, on the trunk for our CI CD process and, and it has failed to release. So what's our next step and what do, what do we expect? So now it's the PDC cycle comes in. So one member is analyzing and picks it's expected by today. So we derive an action item immediately. Right? Analyze and fix expected in X hours. So we say X hours, X is whatever it is. Right? So what do we learn from that step? 
Just say, let's have checkpoint and next hour. So what we are not, not doing is, so in the stand-up it's like it's 15 minutes, right? You can't complete all this thing. What are we doing and what are the learning over there? If you say that this will be done in three days, after three days again we meet. And we build up the observations from there and see what has gone wrong. To ensure that practice is not, once we build up an understanding from them, we will be documenting it and then ensure that it's not getting replicated to any other students. Right? So, after the X hours, so we get the user stories done by Wednesday, make our triangle visible, and this was our target condition. So, we found, now, what the cause of the test case failing? We found the test case data, the test data is missing, right? So, what's optimal consider way to validate the test data before checking to the front? See, if you go, right, what, what we started with, right? The actual target condition which you want to try to release, code ready for release on every Wednesday. See, after an iteration, after X hours or X days, our target condition is changing. Found test data missing. So actually I derived that the whole problem is because of the test data missing. And then you see how it will consider a way to validate the test data before we check into the trunk. Right? Identify simple way of validating the test data and use a way to see the learning from the steps. How do you validate the test data? Recommend to invest time in validating test data. So we started from somewhere else, right? Within a span of three days, we are having a different action item for the team. And that is a concrete action item that can be delivered to the team saying that, you know what happened? We couldn't tell you the three permitted user story which will show business value, which is at a very high level. Because of what? This is the problem. We have sort of tampered the way we have written automation to validate our test data. Um, I know you can watch me, but I have not seen this being this effective when you do a retrospective. We will call it out that we could, uh, at the end of the sprint, that we couldn't deliver committed stories, but you can't drill down to this level. Because all your learnings in those 15 days or even one month of time is all, all put up all sublime by then. Right? But if you're doing it after X hours, let's say you discuss it in stand up and say after at 4, we'll have another summit over there, or probably 3 days. It's current, you would know. And probably the action item and addressing will happen in the same sprint. Whereas if you take it up in the sprint, it will happen, it will go into the backlog of the next sprint. For retro, it is typically done at the end of the yes. retro one, but it yes. appears that data has to be done on a recurring basis recurring before basis. the sprint, yes. as and when need be. Yeah, so you can, so what it, recommendation is, it's because that's why I said, I showed that three level, it can be done in daily, you can do, if you say I won't be, to start with, I won't be doing it daily, I will do it as periodic, probably or weekly. But if your checkpoint let us say that we meet at 3 o'clock today. Yeah, so that's daily. And at that 3 o'clock meeting, another checkpoint comes that, okay, tomorrow morning we have to work as you yeah. do. Then you don't really cannot forecast as to how many kata meetings are there. Exactly, exactly. So the based on the target conditions, as I said, your current conditions and how we drivel into it, it's as I said, you can have two conditions that you have to do or experiment that you have to do, you can be you can have more. But you cannot wait the end of the state goal should be right? Correct. So that's a, so again that that is coming into the scientific thing. So you have to make the sprint goal, right? But in any case, you are missing it, right? If you are committed for three stories out there, you are not giving it even in case meeting, you are missing it. Currently, when you are giving current conditions, you are missing that for three stories. But you never know when you are going to last week the sprint, you will have more six stories embedded by this. Because there is a current problem line where your automation test cases are playing because the test data is not getting validated. If I am you, I will go this grid path, probably by a focus team, and see that with this condition, how much is my with my, with my predictability and go and tell my product owner, the boss, I have committed for 10 stories in particular sprint. With the given condition, I can only deliver you 5. With this being fixed and also given commitment and I am fixing this over there and my velocity probably will be well maintained, next sprint, I will try to do some cover up with a better plan or I will still, I will hit whatever the projection is. I think this is a proactive correction. You are identifying Precise. the potential problem yes. before. And you are getting that implemented and executed as well and you have planned for it. Yes. It has already failed. Now and now you are doing it and the thing is that what uh, is normally being noticed, retro many important data goes missing. Because if we, so very few teams do weekly sprints, right? I mean very optimized we will do it. Normally it's two weeks, right? Or, or probably a month. So within a week of two weeks, having the data fresh in your mind, what was the actual problem? Three weeks also, if you some people two to three weeks, right? Some some people also do for a month and probably one. One, one sprint for hardening, some some companies are there who have bigger organizations uh, in terms of uh, scaling. If you set up, like, should be a direct as a bit of a If you are for, 
if you so it's your call. Uh, so I will show another one where a board where it's a mix of Kata and Scrum practices, which you can practice immediately. You don't have to go for a Kata way. If you're doing Kata board, this will come in obstacles. If you go for a or a Scrum or Scrum one method, you can do it in, in normal impediments, ready to do this. But handling will be a bit different because you have to have a circle uh, on, on that on a periodic basis. Probably a timing fix and where we can be with it. So, uh, what was coming to in terms of scaling, how uh, to answer the question that how we'll have two, three different teams. So, what we do, we'll have a process level cutter, which means that after when we go for it, okay, for this particular stream or, or group of people or program, this is the process level cutter that we want to address. This is my target conditions, and this is this is my current condition, this is my target condition, and we have an interim condition to work with it. But as I said, not all the streams of values. VSMs in that particular program or the bigger picture would be in the same condition. And then we have an organization level Carter direction because it will also give you a goal that to be made. So, what exactly happened, and as I said, when we start for all, the current conditions for one team might be a, which is which is basically a future condition for this, has been already achieved by the team because they're two different teams. So we can cross concert. So we have found it's been found that you know uh, the kata followed across value, various streams are being more effective because you do a lot of knowledge sharing, which again we don't do in retrospective. How many times we have gone down to other team saying that this is my retrospective identification, have you faced any kind of problems and never do it. In this case we do because when we do a cross stream kata, we would have two governing process. One is that a process level parameter would be set and then we have an organizational character. So it would be something like scrum or scrum that would happen. Right? So you can actually leverage from each other's Findings of a particular issue. This is an uh, example of of Carta board and how we do it. The, the target, the current condition is like lead time. Uh, so small, medium, and large. This is a T-shirt sizing on the side. It's the 10 days, 20 days, and 40 days. So we are trying to address it to 8 days, 16, and 36 days. This is our target condition. Escape defect is this, and this is the one under under which set, and we can divide it again in the stream wise. But as I said, the challenge is half the lead time. Which you are asking on, right? But you would have different target and, and uh, uh, current and target condition. And then, in paid cases, and 20% and probably it would remain same, so there is no particular action on it. So, we'll go through it. So, first step that we said, document the setup process. We said that almost there on, so we are almost there on a small story point after some practice, but medium and large is there. So, so it says what is the problem? So it's the test time setup and building of the test environment is the problem out there, right? So we say that step document the step step and we expect to understand the process better. So result is many steps are done manually even if they are automated. So what we have learned, many of the steps can be automated with small changes to the current setup process. The next iteration is say, so what will we do next? What should be our uh, the current understanding and, and which should be the tar target? And it's, it's automate a large part of the test setup. So when we say that the coach or the person who is saying this, you know, this is a very big target to hit, right? So what should we do? We can just automate setup for taste database first and then sort of split it up into the smaller work and then move forward to it. So then we do it immediately in that situation and then rebase line and we say we expect to halve the setup time by the taste database. So that's an ongoing this is again how you use your Akata board out there, right? And then uh, this, this can be done with your sprint from board and then we move forward with the same kind of understanding data than what we have learned. That is when we do it uh, Kanda, uh, it can be done on a day-to-day -day basis. If you want to do full Scrum, uh, this is the simplest method uh, suggested by Jimmy Hen. Uh, he said that you can have an improvement theme and this is pretty well aligned with uh, you know the normal retrospective that we do. We can just bring a data angle to it. So we follow the same things, like what the problem definition of. So what we said that what is the current problem, the next target condition, what do you want to reach? What is the definition of awesome and which will be at what condition we will say that we have really achieved it and what are the first three steps that we will take to achieve that, right? So to start this, what we will do, we will do a uh, session like what we do in retrospective. We will gather around and say well, good, bad, good view would happen, so you can say good, which, which I am happy to happen, appreciation, and then we have frustration, the things that is not going right, what more we need and the mysteries which is for uncertainties that we have come across. Do a post it put it up, gather, do a voting, put it in the form of subject, topic and theme. Even if you are practicing retrospective, you should follow this one, which is very helpful. You don't have to go for Kata. So you, the chips that you get, try to follow it up in terms of 
terms of subject and topic and theme. You will see a, a linear approach of being addressing a problem. So there could be 10 different shapes which can roll up the subject and two different subjects can roll up the theme. So at the end, if you concentrate, you will find 20 sheets or 20 shapes rolling up to a theme and then you can take a different action. And if you are doing uh, uh, sailboat, it, can, it comes up very easily. So again, you do a voting and then we take up the first steps in, uh, in an order and then see what is the vaccine board and go for it to then improvement thing through, through the voting and discussion. So that's why it's a selected team to focus on. If it's bigger team, greater than 10 people, perhaps there is enough people to work on two improvement teams, which uh, I told you, right? You can work on two improvement teams over there and each teams can have multiple target and, 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 and conditions. So decide upon when to follow up and reevaluate. So this is free. Again, I said there is no standard practice like we have. We say in in retrospective, it has to happen at the end of the sprint. It says that decide upon when to follow up and reevaluate. It can you can do daily, you can do after two days, after three days. That's your call. If possible, book a review meeting immediately. Book a meeting or recurring meeting over there. And then you ask the similar kind of questions, part a question, but in the format. Did you reach the target condition? What do we plan for? How much we have moved away from the now problem to that to the, towards that direction, 30%, 40%, 50% of the objective. How much closer are we to our definition of awesomeness? So we might have set an interim targets with value fill. If you have done it for this particular field, it's awesome. Probably not to the target condition. How much close to that, the current, the, the interim condition? Does our team still feel relevant? So what might happen? Again, the uncertainty is right. When we go for a particular action item, when it, the example like this, we are trying to address that we are not able to complete a story. But as and when we iterated, we found that's not the actual problem. So there is no, no fault of the developer. They are pretty much on the track. They are running their house properly. It's a problem in the build mechanism, right? Let's go and fix that. So you take a detour from your current problem and then get it fixed and come back to your own track. In the process, as somebody rightly called out, you might be impacting some amount of velocity. Uh, given that if you can discuss with your stakeholder, that's the right call to take at that point of time. Because otherwise, it will come back as a tech debt. So when you had this your tech tech, it's your call. It's a scrum team call or a management call. Does our team still feel relevant? If yes, identify next, next target condition. If you feel no, it's not needed, we are back on track. Drum it there, scrap it, move ahead with the different team. So the roles that we have as coach manager, uh, this is prominent. So as we bring an agile coach for the organization, we can bring in a coach who have practice into it. There is a learner who learns from him or the practice of the team member, would be a scrum master or any member of the team member. And we have built up a second coach to sort of shadow. And then we have a team who practice the improvement data, build up the learner storyboard, that's important. And then this person can, in, in the same point of time, pose them and then he exit out as an when it's required. So data deployment cycle is probably a project cycle, let's see how we do that. Don't try to expect it. Uh, improvement kata practice faster. So again, the scaling up of kata is as difficult as scaling up a guy. So let's not try to scale it up beyond one team at a time. Let's focus on So this is the way why should we do it. So we have three phases of scaling up kata. So scouts, the study subject. So what do you want to address? External coach is hired. So he, he looks into this and what is the area that we have to focus on first. Phase two, form an advanced group. That is the core group or the core committee and form an agile scaling also. It comes into the picture. AG works towards the series of three target conditions. So that's the prescription that you can take three. You can go more than that. Minimum is three. And does the 25, minimum of 25 PDC cycles. So five, 25 iterations or experiments to do that. And if an, with an average, if we say that at, when we begin 50% fill, so the chances are close to 12 to 15 will be successful out of those 25. So we form AG. AG and the first coaches practice the IKEA. So the coach, which, which the coaches or group of coaches that we bring to whether coaches practice the culture, and then we say initial instructor and coach on site every two weeks. So we, we do a iteration cycle of two weeks. Then the advanced group makes for six to 12 months of plan. So we say now we will scale it up for six to 12 months. We will scale it up from there. So we took take up BSF one, which is a slice one from the process area department versus do whatever you want to process, we are a department or an organization level. Then we do slice two, slice three, and slice four, and so on. And, and we go, we let the slice four to be a smaller team, and it's a big slice one, the bigger one, and then we go for the smaller cycle. Increase the number of managers where you feel the slice is bigger. So that's why we deploy more coaches out there and, and get it going. So advanced group stays and conducts bi weekly reflections. So that's the core committee or something like SOS, they say. That, that will be a group of experts that will conduct the meetings and see that. So second coach 
will come and implement the first coach will now have, might have trained the second coaches so they will come on to the site every two to four weeks as are needed so once this is over so i will do reflection on the next plan then you can dismantle and have a couple of coaches and move on to the next side so if you want to scale up kata in your organization this can be followed and it initially as i said it takes uh, time to scale up by that time you have done frame your advanced group and started doing the slice on a slice to stuff it you will see a gradual momentum as when we go for work with a single coach for a smaller team you will see more results so that's the current condition and target condition thing that we are saying so what we do have learned in this just to uh, revise and we have a coach we have five question being asked and we do a pdc cycle maintain our pdc cycle records go into a process board or on a data board and then take it forward so that's pretty much uh, uh, in a shorter time frame that uh, i could cover right in terms of data uh, so and as i said every step experiment uh, i will have i think four or five minutes more uh, or probably on time you can and to ask any question you can ask or you know off time you can ask the questions what is that five questions i, I showed you the slide right this one yeah this there is a bigger slide somewhere now yes definitely should that that's the thing uh, that and uh, in the process you should get somebody who have i want i don't know if you get a coach uh, immediately but since we have a lean mechanism over there we having cfd we could actually find out the bottlenecks we could use this mechanism to solve many problems which was not getting resolved there depending on what level of agile maturity you are in and you can implement it but it can be as simple as understanding the problem having due diligence and yeah. asking five why kind of questions and getting the things but what it will give it you can have a list uh, a shorter iteration circle of addressing your problem all right thank you so much Thanks for your Yeah, thank you so much.